everyone, my name is Laura. If you are new here, welcome. If you are not, welcome back. Thanks for clicking on this video. So I have my two besties here with me today, Annie and Ray. We are hanging out on the porch because it's actually nice out today. Usually it's way too hot to be out here and it just becomes kind of miserable to be out here. But honestly, it's kind of nice today. So I wanted to include them in the intro because I feel like they're never in my videos. They're always just like off doing their own thing and you can always hear them barking in the background, but you never get to see them. So here they are just hanging out with me. I'm going to put them down so that I can show you plants because if I'm holding them, I can't hold plants. And I mean, I'd love to sit here for the entire video and just talk to you with them in my arms, but I'm not sure that that's what you came here for. So I'm going to put them over on the day bed next to me so that they can relax and they'll probably be barking because you can see how alert they are. The porch is all windows so they're just like what's out there? <laughs> they're so weird. Anyway I just talked for like five minutes and I realized I never even told you what this video was about even though you can read and you saw the title. Um, I like to tell you what I'm going to be talking about. So we're going to be doing my July favorites. I have no idea how many plants I'm going to show you. I have them all laid out in front of me or around me here. Um, but I didn't count them, so it might be like five or eight, something, something around there. It's like probably less than 10, but I, I don't know. You'll have to count for me. So now I'm going to switch out these puppers for some plants and I'll show you some plants that have been doing really great for me that I have been loving this month. Goodbye. <laughs> the first plant that I want to show you is my Syngonium Pink Spot. Look at how cute this plant is looking. It put out this beautiful leaf down here, this one right there, and then it's putting this one out. I guess it already put it out, but it's hardening off. And I'm just loving how much pink this plant is giving me because it hadn't really given me much pink um, before. This was the leaf that it came with. It was like a cutting. So you can see there's like a shadow of pink all over the leaf, but there's not really like splotchy pink. Now oh, Annie and Ray are playing, so if you hear puppy growls, they're sitting over here slapping each other in the face. So just prepare yourself for a little bit of puppy background noise. Anyway, then it gave me, I think it was this leaf, which had a little bit more pink splotching, but it was like, but it was very muted as well as this leaf here. This one like didn't have any pink. I guess you can see a tiny little speck there in the middle. This one had a little bit more pink. I mean, this one was like all pink, but again, like very muted. And then these two leaves have just come out super duper pink, like almost all pink, but not nearly as muted. So I'm very excited about it. It's also growing fairly quickly, at least compared to how it was growing before, because it really was not growing at all. It took like months to give me one leaf, even though it was already rooted when I got it. But now it's given me like two or three leaves in one month so I'm pretty pretty psyched about that and excited to see this keep growing. I can already see another little leaf starting to emerge so that's very exciting. Give you a one last look at the Syngonium pink spot before we move on to the next plant. I have all the plants like laid out in front of me and I'm just like I don't know which one I want to show you first because I don't plan any of these videos but I guess we can keep in the spirit of Syngonium and move on to another Syngonium. This here, friends, is, oh, I'm dropping soil. I'm dropping soil. Uh-oh. <laughs> this here is my Syngonium Podophyllum Albo, and I am oh, just over the moon with this plant right now because if you remember, I repotted this before I went on vacation to Mexico back in April, like literally three days before I hopped on a plane, I decided this is a really great time to repot a bunch of plants. And you know what happened to all those plants while I was gone for over a week? Well, they all like dried up and got really sad. And this was one of them. It got so sad because as it was adjusting from water to soil, because I potted it up from water, it had been rooting in water, it just dried up a lot quicker than it wanted to and a bunch of the leaves died and I'm just like a little ding dong for thinking that that timeline was gonna work like I'm just gonna leave this plant for like a week and a half without water and without any supervision and it's gonna be fine right no wrong it was not fine it almost completely died back this is the only leaf that's left from the original leaves and honestly it's I mean it's not doing super hot you can see how just like meh it is but Honestly, out of all the original leaves, this one has always looked the best. The rest of them just like melted off. It got so crispy, so sad. 
it was just a tragedy, really. A planned tragedy, if you will. But out of nowhere, like two weeks ago, it just started popping out new growth. Like it hadn't given me any gr new growth. The original plant had like maybe four or five leaves on it and they're just dying one by one. No new growth was coming. And so I really had given up on this plant. I had actually started to look for another Syngonium elbow because I love Syngonium elbows and I was very sad to be losing mine. But yeah, about a few weeks ago, it just started popping out new growth and all of these leaves are new. Look at this. Look at how beautiful all the growth is. All the leaves are completely different, which is what I love about this plant. They just all look so different. Look at that. They're just stunning. They're stunning. Like the amount of variegation varies from leaf to leaf. We got this little BB one too. This was the first one that popped. And it just is so beautiful. This one is giving me another leaf. It looks like it's going to be very white. I thought this one was going to be all white when it came out because when it was all rolled up, I could only see like the white sectoral portion of it. And so that one's going to give me another very, very white leaf, which I'm very excited to see. This plant has just really, really been rocking my socks recently and I'm so excited about it. I had to share it with you. I absolutely had to share it with you. I'm always admiring people's like beautiful, huge syngonium elbows. And I thought I would never have one, but it looks like we're well on our way for this plant to grow and just like be stunning. I think there's three or four plants in here. So yeah, I am just very excited. I'm very excited about this plant. Very, very excited. If you can't tell, I love it. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna put it away before I keep dropping more soil because now I have a little pile that just keeps growing on the floor that I'm gonna have to clean up after this, so let's move on. Okay, this one's a cutie that I never thought I would include in one of these videos. This is my variegated green Maranta. And if you remember back in, I don't know, maybe January, I showed this plant in one of my plant tour videos and it was just like slowly dying, like very slowly, just stopped putting out new growth. Every leaf was dying. It was just getting kind of mushy and gross. And I honestly was so over it because I had been trying to baby this plant for so long. It started as a huge six inch hanging basket and it had ended in like two leaves. And so at that point I was just done. I was over it. I didn't want anything to do with it. And I started just completely neglecting it. I was just over it. And it died all the way back. And it was just a cup of moss. And I just didn't throw it away. And this is what that little cup of moss has turned into. It's turned into this little baby variegated Maranta. And it is just so precious. I want to show you this leaf here. It's like almost a half moon. Look at that. How cool. It is just so adorable. It's like the underdog story to end all underdog stories. And that is why I am loving this little guy. He's putting out about two new leaves a week for me and he's growing a bunch of little new sprouts in here. So this started as like one little sprout with like maybe one leaf and now it's like three or four little sprouts in there, which is so fun. Next up, I have my Philodendron Billy Etier. You saw this guy in my tissue culture video, I believe it was. This little guy was a little tissue cultured plantlet that I got earlier this year. I don't remember exactly when, probably around March or something like that. And it had itty bitty little leaves. Let me show you those itty bitty little leaves. Like these down here that literally could be any plant. It could be any plant. And now it is looking like a little baby Billy Etier. I love the way these leaves look. It just, I don't know, it looks like little peas or something. I don't know, like a little pea pod. Maybe that's just me, but I am loving the growth on this plant. It's growing so quickly and it is just looking beautiful. Don't you agree? Don't you agree that this is a cool looking plant? I feel like a lot of philodendron kind of end up looking the same, which I don't mind. I love the traditional philodendron shape, but I do like to see something a little bit different, a little bit new, and it's been such an easy going plant that I'm just loving it. Okay, we're sticking to the theme of little plants. We're gonna do all of the little plants and get them over with. So the next plant that I wanna share with you is my Alocasia cupria. I did share with you back in my, all my Alocasia video, back when I only had like three or four Alocasia, that I was getting this plant and I was super excited, but I don't think I ever actually showed it to you. So 
this is it. This is my little Alocasia cupria. Look how cute. It came with just one leaf. It was this leaf that is now getting all nasty. And it has put out two new leaves for me. It was a little corm baby. And it's starting to take the shape of a cupria. This new leaf is getting kind of that veining and like ribbing on the leaf. Oh, there you go. You can see that a lot better there. And the coloration that cuprias are known for. So I'm very excited because this was top of my alocasia wish list for a long, long time. They were really hard to get your hands on. But I managed to find someone locally who was very kind and gifted me this. And I am just over the moon, absolutely over the moon and excited to grow this baby out. I'm noticing this is a pretty philodendron heavy favorites list, which is not surprising, honestly. I mean, if you know me, you know I love my philodendron. So up next is my philodendron gigas. This plant has just blown me away. I don't know how much of this I've shared with you guys. I know I've shared it with some of my plant friends, but philodendron gigas is just that plant that I got because I had the opportunity to get it, not because I wanted it, and then it became one of my favorite plants. Like, I had seen pictures of it online, and I thought it looked sickly because it does look kind of, I don't know, like limp? I don't know. I don't know if there's probably a better way to describe it than limp. But the leaves look kind of droopy, especially you can see that on some of the older leaves down here. It looks kind of droopy, not super upright, a little bit a little bit curved, doesn't really hold its shape. And so in the pictures I'd seen, it just looked sick. It looked like a Melanochrysum that was just struggling to stay alive. So I never wanted one. I never, never ever wanted one. And then I got the opportunity to get one for a, like super, super cheap. And so I just said, you know what, whatever, I'll give it a try. I'll give the Philodendron Gigas a try. And Man, oh man, am I so glad that I did. I love, love, love this plant. The leaves are so velvety. And now that I'm talking about it, now that I'm going through all of this, I feel like I actually had this in my June favorites video because I feel like I'm getting deja vu from talking about this. So clearly it's been a favorite for a while now, but I'm not gonna remove it from this list just because I think I talked about it last month. So it is so velvety just so stunning. The leaves come in like bright orange and then fade to this like very dark green. They're almost rubbery, but not quite as rubbery as like the Jose Buono. It is just a stunning plant and I love how unique it is. Like the one thing that I didn't like about it before I got it that it looked so funky is what I like about it now. Funny how that works, huh? It's just a beautiful plant. I have seen that they're becoming super, super available, um, at least in my area, which usually plants that are available in my area have been available in other areas for much longer. So if you are looking for a gigas or thinking like, oh, I might want to get one, keep your eyes peeled. They're becoming very available and pretty affordable. So gigas, a fave. Another philodendron, because why wouldn't I have another philodendron on this list, especially after I said, this is a really philodendron heavy list. But this is my philodendron Jose Buono. I'm like having a hard time showing it to you. I don't know how to get it in frame. Move this bird of paradise a little bit. There we go. This is better, maybe? But this is philodendron Jose Buono. Um, I got it as a cutting with three leaves. One, two, and three. Three. The really neat thing about Philodendron Jose Buono is that it comes in with some variegation. This leaf is still hardening off, but it comes in with some variegation. Um, some leaves and some plants give more variegation than others. This one's pretty low variegation, but it's the first leaf that it gave me since it rooted up. So I'm not super surprised that it's super low variegation. It does have another leaf coming in that has a big white chunk. Do you see that? A big sectoral chunk right from like there to there. So I'm very excited for that leaf. But anyway, the fun thing about Jose Bono is that the leaves come out like this and then they slowly start fading. The white becomes more like a lime green or a creamy kind of color and they fade and they fade until basically all of it is gone. I'm loving this plant because it was on my wish list for such a long, long time and they honestly were pretty hard to get your hands on for a while. And then when they became more accessible, they were pretty expensive. So 
I didn't really think I would ever be able to add one to my collection. It's one of those plants that it's like, oh, I wish, I hope someday, but probably not. And then I was able to get one. Um, someone in my area took a cutting of theirs and gave it to me for such an incredible price, like incredible price. Like I just had to like not go to Starbucks for a couple days to be able to afford this plant. And I really never thought that that would happen. So I am over the moon with this plant. I watched it root up, which took a little bit of time, but now that it's rooted up and it has given me a new leaf, it's popping out another leaf right up here. And it has another growth point. I'm like so scared. I'm gonna knock everything over trying to show you this because there's no space. Where's the other growth point? You can see it right in there. Do you see that little guy right there? There, I'm poking it. You see that? Has another activated growth point so that it's gonna start shooting out more leaves there. I am just over the moon, like over the stinking moon about this plant. And I just love it. I don't know. I just love it. Clearly there's a theme today with variegated plants because we had the pink spot syngonium, we had the albo <laughs> syngonium, the variegated maranta, the jose buono, and then the two plants that I'm going to end this video with are all variegated. So clearly I'm having a thing for variegated plants right now, but how could you not, you know? How could you not? They're just beautiful. So yeah, that is jose buono. And I'm super excited to see that new leaf come in with that giant chunk of sectoral variegation. I'll keep you updated once it does. All right, I don't know how well you're gonna be able to see this plant because it is just massive, but this is my Philodendron Mayui, which I believe is also known as Philodendron Tahiti. It took me forever trying to figure out whether those two were the same plant or not, and I think I've come to the conclusion that they are, but correct me if I'm wrong, but my Philodendron Mayui, I got this plant about two months ago. Ah, all the like patina from the pot is just like dropping on me, hold on. I'm making a mess. When am I not though? Oh gosh. Okay. That's okay. I'll clean up. I'll clean up later. I'll clean up later, right? It'll be fine. This Philodendron Mayoi, I had a little one that I got probably about a year ago. It was a cutting and I was rooting it up. It now has like maybe five leaves. So it's actually gotten pretty big, but I just wanted a big one. Like my little one was throwing out very immature leaves, like leaves that looked like this one right here. Just kind of like almost like wavy leaves but it did not look like a mayo eye and when i got the chance to get this giant like 10 inch pot of mature mayo eye oh there you can see it a lot better there i jumped on it and i think this is the most recent plant i've added to my collection too i don't think i've gotten anything since then i've been really good about buying plants y'all i have not been buying plants at all tip to not buy plants is plan a wedding and then when you have to pay for everything then you get scared to buy plants hot tip of the day but this is the most recent plant i've added to my collection and i do not regret it at all whatsoever because look at this guy they so beautiful so beautiful it's just again such a unique philodendron like i was talking about with the billy Etier baby it is just such a unique looking philodendron. It doesn't look like a lot of the traditional philodendron and so I love it. I just love it and I love how big it is. It's like climbing on a hoop. You can kind of see the hoop back there. I have it kind of tied up on a hoop so that it can climb a little bit. I'm just very, I'm very in love with this plant right now and it's growing a ton. You can see all the like bright green leaves or all the new leaves. It's putting out new leaves all the time, just constantly, which is very exciting. All right, we have made it to the end. Who is counting how many plants? Because I was not, but if you were, let me know how many plants I just showed you, but I have two to wrap this up with. And the reason I'm showing you both of them, you will be able to see very quickly why it is that I'm showing you both of these at the same time. And it is because they're both variegated monsteras. This guy here on the left is a variegated monstera albo. This guy here on the right is a monstera Thai constellation. I have not shared my Thai constellation with you guys on this channel and I've barely shared my Monster Albo with you. So I was very excited to kind of highlight these two because they are both growing. So I thought what better time to show them to you than in a favorites video while they're both growing. Like it just, the stars aligned. The stars really aligned for me to be able to introduce these plants to you. So I'm going to set down the Thai constellation so I can show you the Albo more closely. I got this as a 
rooting cutting from someone locally. It had this leaf and that was it, but it was rooted pretty well and it has since rooted up even more. We have a little baby root poking out over here. You can see some of the roots throughout. Yes, this is a Starbucks cup, reduce, reuse, recycle. And the first leaf that it put out for me was this one. So it looks pretty similar in like the speckling and coloration of that first leaf. And then this is the most recent leaf. So a very, very white leaf, not concerningly white, but like, like so white that it's beautiful, but not concerning, if that makes sense. If you have variegated plants, you know what I mean? It is very stunning. I am absolutely in love with how quickly this is growing. It did take a while to put out this new leaf, but once it put that out within like two weeks, it was starting to put this leaf out. And I can see, if maybe I can show you if it will show up on camera. Does it show up on camera? It does not show up on camera, but it is starting to get a little bump, which means that it's starting to form another leaf. So that's very exciting. I can't wait to see what that leaf looks like. I am loving this plant and y'all know I have a terrible track record with Monstera Albos. This is my third one and the only one that I have alive. So <laughs> I do think that this one is going to make it. I mean, it's a lot more established than any of my other Albos ever were. And I really was set up for success a lot more with it not having to be shipped. I picked it up locally. It was already like pretty well rooted. And the person I got it from, I have gotten a lot of my plants from and I trust with all of my plants' lives. So I think this one's going to do really well and I'm very excited for it. So I wanted to update you on that. This is my Monstera Borsigiana elbow. And then we have a little Queen Thai constellation here. I feel like kind of sneaky telling you about this plant. Like no one knows that I have this plant. Kind of a little, a little secret that I've been keeping over here. But yes, I got this little guy. He was a tissue cultured plantlet. He still has one of his little leaves from back in his, in his old tissue culture days. You can see it's kind of wrinkled up and nasty. When I got him, he had a couple more of these little tissue culture baby leaves, but they've since fallen off. But yes, it has put out this leaf in my care. So when I got it, it had this leaf, some of the tissue cultured baby leaves, and then this one. And this is the newest one. It's kind of oblong. It looks kind of funny. And it is putting out a new leaf right there. I have heard that Thai constellations grow pretty slow and that they are pretty prone to root rot. So I'm keeping it in the little like clear cup that it came in so that I can see all the roots that are growing in there and I can keep an eye on them. And that's given me a lot of peace of mind because I was very anxious about getting this plant and having it raw on me. And then in terms of the speed of growth, it has been pretty slow. I did get it after I got my Monstera Albo, not super long after though, like not even a month later. And my Monstera Albo had to finish rooting up and put out two leaves before this guy could do anything. So like this leaf was unfurling when I got it. So it finished unfurling this leaf, but then I had not seen anything until this leaf popped up two or three days ago. So yeah, it's a slow grower. That's okay. Like not all our plants have to grow like at the speed of light. So I'm okay with it growing slow as long as it stays healthy and the roots stay healthy. That's the one thing I'm super, super worried about. So if you have any tips on Thai constellations and like when to water, what kind of substrate to keep them in to make sure that the roots don't rot on you, please let me know because I want the best for my baby plant. I mean, who doesn't want the best for their baby plant? So yeah, that is... The last plant that I wanted to share with you, I guess the little double whammy of my two variegated Monstera. I hope you enjoyed seeing all of my favorite plants from July. Obviously, I love all of my plants, but there are always plants that kind of stick out that are growing a little bit more or are doing a lot better after they were like almost dead that just like get you really excited about being a little plant parent. So these are the plants that got me excited about being a little plant parent this month. And I don't know if you noticed, but you should be really proud of me. I don't have any Hoya in this video because I have been doing a lot of video with Hoya and I know Hoya aren't for everybody. So I wanted to make a video that wasn't all about Hoya and I didn't include a single Hoya in here, but rest assured if you are super into Hoya and want to see more of my Hoya, they're, they're coming. Like I will never stop making Hoya videos because I'm a Hoya lover. So all that being said, if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe down below if you haven't already, and I'll see you in my next one. Bye!